Hey men, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, I have got a few new axes uh, that I recently acquired. One was a $20 marketplace find, and the other right here, $20 eBay find, unbranded. But this sucker is fairly close to five pounds, and it has a nice uh, wedge type profile that looks like it'll be good for splitting wood. Let's get some handles on these, get them fixed up. This one. Uh, very loose on the handle. I do want to try to save the handle though. It's a pretty nice handle. Let's get after it. Welcome to man time. Yeah, so I've got a few things that are going to be coming up on the channel uh, to include building a, a firewood rack or two. I've got a bunch of scrap steel, uh, some old pipe that was ripped out of a building, and some other stuff. Maybe I can figure out a way to weld that all together to make a firewood rack. Uh, but I do actually need a, a good splitting axe. I was using my uh, plum cruiser axe as a, as a splitting axe, and it did okay. But uh, I'm looking for maybe something a little bit different so this one here um, it's got kind of a fat profile and one thing you can do here if you want to turn like a regular axe into more of a splitting axe which is probably what I'm going to do here is like take off you know the first half inch or quarter inch of that profile and bring it back to where it's actually a little bit fatter um, that'll help out a little bit but I've got some nails <laughs> that were installed in this one to to keep it you know together <laughs> uh, I may have worked on this axe who hasn't done that before right so there's one there um, let's see what else do we got in here uh, some other little stuff and what you can do is if you've ever seen these screwdrivers with a full tang like that you can use that I've actually got this one just sharpened off you know to a uh, point <clears throat> so See if we can get in here and get this other nail out of here. Maybe without this piece of wedge in there, it'll come out. Yeah, this is just, it's pretty ugly in here. There we go. Yeah, it would be nice to save this handle, but man, I'm going to have to take off a lot of meat here to get this. Oh, and this is a spiraled wood, wood nail. So it is going to be extremely difficult to get out of there. Well, I think I found the right tool for the job. Hopefully you found the right beverage for the video. And this is my Klein and Sons now. Went in here just really gentle like. I don't want to screw this one up. But reaching on it. There we go. It's like an old pallet nail with those swivels, you know, going down into it. And what else do we got down in here? More pieces of wedge. Um, let's see here, yeah, looks like most of the wedge is out of there already. Alright, I think I'm pretty close here to being able to get this. Get this handle backed out. Taking a look at the damage here. No more metal in there. Yeah, here's uh, here's what it looks like 
it is in pretty rough condition may not be able to save this one there's and there's not much shoulder left either you know to the inner eardrum. Well, there is there's the axe head, and it is in pretty rough shape. It looks like it was kind of drilled out and tried to be fixed before even, maybe. Let me grab a handsaw and see if I can't run down this kerf a little bit, and maybe we can make something work. Oof. What do we got here? Uh, something and sons. Yeah, I don't know. Looks like a pretty sharp saw. See if it'll work. feel like wood. It's not dull in my blades. So that's what I going. Yeah, so this axe handle, it seems like it's old, but it's actually probably not. And from what I've seen, uh, some of the diamond edge stuff, um, or maybe stuff with a diamond on it, it has like uh, also made in China on it. But this one has diamond edge and then forge something below it. I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly, but some of these have been known to be made in China even though they look old, so. Uh, tools to get this seated down a little bit lower. Um, main tool I'm gonna use here is a foreign one. And then for this other axe head with a really nice jersey pattern, um, I went out to, I think Tractor Supply. And this one here has a really nice swell and a really nice and skinny uh, grip down here at the bottom where I'm just just able to touch with this finger all the way around, you know. And uh, let's see, this one is made in USA. It's called a house handle. House handle made in USA. Single bit 1636 double A. Really nice. Uh, made in USA. Uh, some amount of heartwood in it. But these are really nice once you peel this laminate off of there and then put some um, boiled linseed oil on there. Now I've got some better wedges. The wedges that come with this are not great. Let me just show you. It's like a, it's like a dang balsa wood. Um, and I ordered some off of eBay, like a 10-pack. Um, let's see here. And I've got, I've got a couple right here. And they are much, much nicer. Much, 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 much nicer. I think the ones that come with the axe handles are poplar. Uh, maybe something a little bit different. But basically the cheapest wood that you could possibly make something out of. You know. So. 
There's somebody on eBay supplying these ones that are uh, much, 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 much better quality. Oh, look, beaver tooth. Beaver tooth. That's where we get these from. 20 X. Yeah, one of them in like a 20 pack. But yeah, just basically, basically went on eBay and got some. You can see it's a much, you know, darker wood. Um, this stuff here, you know, this is actually a good piece of wood. So use that as my my wedge. And we will start getting both of these. I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to saw this down a little bit further, and then we'll start getting our fit up on both of these. Yeah. All right, well, I started driving this one down, and you can see there now how much reveal we have. I think I should be able to get another... Yeah, it, it's not... It's seating past the... It's seating past the shoulder of it, you know? So, I don't want to go too much further. I'm just driving it. Yeah driving it kind of past where it's supposed to be seated huh. well maybe I can get a little bit more on it that is pretty darn seated yeah I think I'm gonna go with that try to get a wedge in here and call it good it's actually better, probably, to have had that happen. Um, yeah. Yeah, see now I've got one really nice like fat piece and then one skinnier piece where that's actually what the axe handle is wanting. But it's still a little tight, you can see there. It's not wanting to go down on this front edge. Yeah, really nice having a uh, four and a half inch grinder with this sandpaper flapper disc dealy on there. All right, let's get in here and take a good look at what's going on. Here's here's our axe head with our handle, and the back part of the handle here has just been dug out and messed up pretty good. So this is going to be really good for the back half of it, and then this one in the front, you know, there's very little missing out of that one so that's gonna jam in there pretty good so i think it's probably gonna be better having them in halves like that man i wish i had some wood glue that wasn't hard as a rock let me double check i found an old wood glue maybe maybe not oh it's still pliable all right Yeah, for a while there, uh, well, most of the time, I didn't run wood glue. Um, but it does two things. It kind of lubricates it as it's going down, and it actually, you know, helps hold it in there. So we will run with the wood glue this time around. Yeah, very nice. All right, 
That's how you do that. So there's nearly finished and getting to the point now where I can touch that, that thumb to the butt of my hand. Really nice grip there. Yeah, a little bit needs to come down here in the middle still, but uh, not far from being pretty good. Yeah, sometimes it's <laughs> not the best decision making just to uh, barrel into a project without the proper safety equipment. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Uh, what I was doing there was actually holding my breath. Um, probably not the best way to go about it. So I've actually got, you know, the appropriate respirator for taking off, uh, taking off varnish. Yeah, the varnish on this handle is pretty severe. Um, I mean, it's clogging up my wheel pretty good. Let's see if we can clean this out maybe with a file card. I got one axe down, one to go. And this one here is going to be a little bit tricky. So it needs to be thinned out. Yeah, first thing, I just need to start thinning it out. Like toward the back here. And I'd love to say, like, you know, using traditional methods and all that, four and one. <laughs> yeah, right. That's why they got tools like this nowadays. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a tight fit. All right, we are getting closer and closer here. Here's our uh, jersey pattern axe head. And as you can see here, it is coming together pretty nicely. Uh, almost up, we've got maybe another three eighths of an inch to go. Let me bang it down here a little bit and see where we end up. Shoulders, shoulders are really nicely matched up here. I was pretty close on that one. Yeah, man, that is that is almost there. Almost there. I wonder if it isn't already there. That may that may be there. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it good there. Yep. Just a few more things to finish up here before the sun goes down. And we can split some wood. I want to get a couple of these in here. Um, kind of work with the bias. go that kind of jams everything you know on the top here holds it in place there's one down yeah you can see there the benefit from using that four and a half inch angle grinder as your primary tool there um, you can sharpen <laughs> sharpen your axe once you get done so it works 
Good all the way around. All right. A little excess glue on there. Never hurt anybody. Okay, same deal here. And we'll just kind of set it basically the exact same way. Cross cut. And I tell you what, <laughs> that's not going anywhere. Okay, two more steps to a completed axe. We've already got a nice razor sharp edge on there, really blunt tip, not a lot of, you know, taper coming into it. Um, just what we want there. All right, last two steps. Last couple steps for me are gonna be a hand sand uh, with the grain here, up and down. You know, especially where your hand's gonna be riding. Uh, you want this to be a nice smooth, you know, smooth transition to the palm. Okay, let's start off with a damp rag here. This will give us an idea too of what the colors are going to look like in the in the wood. Just want to get all that sawdust out of there. Looking much better. Much, much better. Okay. Give these things a minute to dry. Grab a frosty beverage. And uh, then we'll put some BLO on them. Last step in the process here is going to be the boiled linseed oil. And I just grab a rag, get it saturated down, and start going to town. Now I've been um, up and down on these with uh, more sandpaper, you know, my hands uh, just really feeling to make sure that it's exactly where I want it to be uh, before putting the boiled linseed oil on here. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, and I've made the mistake of putting this on too thick uh, before, so I just do a nice light coat like this and uh, call it a day. Both of these have a really good feel to them. Really good feel. And I'll hit the tops of them here with some boiled linseed oil to probably just pour it on there, but I want that glue to kind of set up first, so. Do that afterward. Heck, hit the head. You know, not gonna hurt anything. I guess this is called the butt or the pole of your axe. Who knew? One of my subscribers out there, for sure, JCC. Shout out, my man. Look at that beautiful thing. Diamond Edge. If you guys know who made Diamond Edge, I did a bunch of searching online and couldn't find anybody. Um, one company, kind of called Shipley, uh, was mentioned as making some Diamond Edge or Diamond products. Um, don't know for sure. So, If anybody recognizes this one, it's a no-name, just a big wedge of an axe. Uh, like I said, this one's closer to... Uh, five pounds should be a perfect splitter, which is what I'm looking for. Nice and fat, nice abrupt edge, very little taper, and very sharp using that uh, flapper wheel. We'll just go straight with that. Uh, normally I would touch it up with a stone. These are not splitting axes. I'm sorry, these are not uh, chopping axes. These are splitting axes. So I'm not as concerned 
with uh, any of that. All right, man. I have let these axes cure up overnight, and now we're gonna try both of them. I was swinging them around a little bit last night, get a feel for them. This one is substantially heavy, heavier to the tune of about a pound. Um, so if this one will do the job, you know, that's, that's what I want to happen. But you can see they're really nice, just a blunt edge on them as much as I could do. Uh, the profiles on them, fairly similar. Um, this one, kind of more of the wedge. But I've got some 20-inch uh, chunks of red oak here. Let's start off with the lighter one and then go to the heavier one and see which one does better. All right, just managed to save this axe handle, which is really nice because now I've got an additional, you know, wedge banger axe that will also double as hopefully a good firewood axe. Well, let's check it out here. Um, don't see any knots. Fairly straight grained, maybe a little knot, kind of right down here on the bottom. But let's see how we're doing here. And this, <laughs> this oak, oh man, is it, is it hard. Especially when you get up to, you know, 20 inches like this. Um, these are going to be difficult to split. So. Yeah. I used to split with a splitter. And I don't know how well this is going to work out. <sighs> Whew. I just... <laughs> Felt like the axe head we was gonna break right off of that one. I may have to get another splitter. I think I'm going to, actually. Wow. All right, what was that? Four. Let's see if this. Let's see if this heavier one will do any better of a job. For something like this. I don't know. <sighs> yeah, the the weight definitely has an advantage. Uh, for this heavier axe. Alright. Keep going. Oh, yeah. But yeah, red oak is a very stringy wood. And you can see here. You know. And this one is, this one is all knotty. So that X actually did a very good job. You can see there when it starts to bend and twist like that, that's the hardest split and stuff. And we did have a big knot down here at the bottom. Boy, that is wet. All right, let's, uh, let's give the lighter one one more shot on this one. But as far as it goes, I think I'm gonna be better off, especially for the bigger stuff with this bigger one. Both the, both the profile and the weight of that bigger one are going to make it a better splitter. But let's see. That one got some penetration. side here. Yeah, it's it's 
wanting to split. It is wet too. I mean, red oak typically splits a little bit better after it's cured in uh, in rounds for a little bit. So, but there we go again. Just didn't quite have the ump. Try the five five pounder. We're near it. Got a chunk of it to break free. Come at it again from this side here. Yeah, uh, a lot more authority with this axe. A lot more. Just a whole lot more authority with this X. That again looks like it was more designed to split wood. So, well, there you go, man. Uh, man, man. I don't know. Both y'all. <laughs> Both y'all. Uh, so these are the two axes that we put together on this episode. Um, the heft and the axe profile and the design of this one makes it a superior splitting tool although it is much heavier. Um, this one I could use for a much longer period and be okay, but the profile just isn't there to help allow that wood to split apart, especially the stringy red oak. But a good day overall. Made a couple new friends here. <laughs> Hopefully you guys uh, made some new friends as well with some axes of your own. Get out there, have you some man time too. <laughs>